Well, about 10 years ago, I made a series of videos on making a parlor guitar. And as part of that series, I did a couple of kind of how-to videos on French polishing. When I looked at the sats on my YouTube channel the other day, I was, I was amazed that, though, that the couple of videos that I did have had somewhere in a region of like 24, 25,000 views. So it's clearly an interest in uh, Luthier's French polishing. Um, but of course, that was 10 years ago. And over that period of time, um, I like to feel that my technique has, uh, has developed, so to speak. Um, so what I thought I'd do is do a couple of more videos and sort of update the uh, French polishing process for you. So here we go. So first things first, let's get on to the um, absolutely scintillating topic of grain filling. So woods like mahogany, rosewood, the sapili that I'm using on this mandolin, they have this open pour structure. So if you want to, to French polish and have a, a flat, even surface without the grain, the texture of the grain showing, then you've got to fill those pores. So 10 years ago, and up to quite recently actually, I was using um, pumice powder. And there's nothing wrong with pumice powder. If I was polishing um, big mahogany dining tables, etc., I'd, I'd, I'd continue to use it. But on something like the, the mandolin and of course other instruments, where you've got fine detail purfling around the edges or whatever, I don't think it's as good as it could possibly be. What you're doing with the pumice is that you're, grind, you're grinding a little pad with, with the pumice onto the surface of the wood. And you're making this kind of paste of uh, wood dust, pumice, a bit of shellac, some of the natural dyes, and you're forcing that into the grain. But of course what you're also doing is you're forcing that into the purfling, etc. And you can kind of discolour some of that purfling and lose the crisp detail. So that's why I've started using um, epoxy resin. The epoxy resin is, of course, perfectly clear. So, you know, you, you, if, if it, you push it into the grain, it fills the grain. But also, as it goes over the, the fine detail of the purflins, it doesn't discolour those. So it leaves everything looking much crisper. So that's what I'm going to show you now. Um, how I go about filling the grain with um, epoxy resin. So what I'm doing now is sanding the backs and the sides with some 500 silicon carbide paper. Um, it's the old cliche, but really it is all about preparation. And whilst I'm doing it, we're by the window, so there's plenty of light. You can't beat daylight for doing this sort of work. And um, I've got my glasses on and uh, a head magnifier. So any tiny imperfections I can pick up on. And what you've got to remember with French polishing is that um, it's not going to it's not going to hide anything, you know. It's not like spraying a lacquer on and, and the lacquer is going to fill in all the lumps and bumps for you. Um, this surface has got to be as good as it possibly can. So as I say, we're going over 500 silicon carbide and then using um, quadruple zero wire wool, which I find helps lift the dust out of the grain and also the things like the white purfling lines it tends to lift the dust out of those and um, help get that nice and clean. So what I'm doing then is concentrating on the back and sides um, and I'm going to get that filled. So I've cleaned up the back and sides with the 500 silicon carbide, some wire wool, giving it a good hoover and burnished it with some paper towel. And you know, that's that's looking really good. The wood, the wood itself is shining. There's no finish on that. So what I'm going to do now is, um, is fill the grain. So I've mixed up my epoxy. And what I'm, I'm not going to try to do the whole instrument in one hit. I'm going to do one side, then the other, and then the back. 
and I'm using Zappy Poxy and I'm using the 30 minute version because what I've found is what you want to do is keep going over it keep going back over it and working it into the grain and you'll notice that you have little air bubbles come to the surface so it's quite nice, it takes a while to, to solidify because you, then you can go back over those um, those areas where there are the bubbles and kind of force them, force them out. So, so I'm just going to go all the way over here. I haven't sanded the front yet or the neck because clearly um, I, was, I, I run the risk of, um, of making making a mess on those, don't I, with this um, epoxy. So I'm only going to clean the, the neck and the, and the soundboard up, the top plate, um, once I've finished working on the grain. I think I'm going to leave that now for half an hour or so and I can work on the other surfaces. Okay, so that's, I think, the uh, back and sides filled. So, obviously I'm going to leave that overnight now to um, harden off and tomorrow I can sand it all back off again. Such is life. So here we are, 24 hours. The um, epoxy is dry and what I've managed to achieve is the look of um, a cheaper nasty mandolin made in a dodgy factory in the Far East and retails at about 40 quid. So what I've got to do is sand off all of this um, surface epoxy, um, leaving of course just the epoxy resin which is in the pores of the grain itself. So I'll work down through, through subsequently finer grades of abrasive paper. And when I get to almost to the surface of the wood, I will, I will make sure that I'm using 500 um, grade because what I don't want to do is put any scratches into the surface of the sapele itself with the coarse grade um, abrasive papers that I'm trying to remove the bulk of the epoxy with. So I shall don my um, dusk mask, get my head down, and hopefully in about uh, an hour and a half's time, that'll be done. Well, that took, a, that took a lot longer than I anticipated. I think I said it's going to take about an hour and a half. I think I probably spent more like four hours sanding down the backs and sides to get rid of all that epoxy. And then once I uh, had done that, clean up the neck, head overlay, and give the, um, the top plate a good, a good sand. And um, all of that, as I say, using um, 500 silicon carbide paper. So the whole thing's clean now. The grain's filled, ready to start French polishing. Now one thing I wanted to say about this um, filling in with epoxy, just in case you decide to do it, is it's not easier than pumice. It's not quicker than pumice. It's not cheaper than pumice. It's not any less physical hard work than pumice. The only reason that you're going to do this is because you think that the result is going to be better than using pumice. So don't think this is an easy ride. Um, it's hard work but as I say hopefully the results are better and I think as a craftsman that's what you should always be thinking about. If I change something, if I do something different, if I change my method, whatever, Am I doing it for the right reasons? Am I doing it because the result is going to be better? Not cheaper, not quicker, none of those things. Is it going to be better? Anyway, that's today's sermon. So um, what I'm going to do now, mask the, uh, the fretboard up, have a good clean up everywhere, and um, start French polishing, which you'll see in the next video. Okay, so until then, take care. Cheers.